Welcome to the second edition of the Indo-German Research Day and a warm welcome to all the audience, be it in Germany, India and all over the world. The Indo-German Research Day is brought to you by the German Center for Research and Innovation, DWIH, together with its supporters. 32 institutions from India and Germany joining hands today for, uh, to give you a comprehensive insight into their institutions, into funding opportunities, cooperation projects and much more. My name is Dr. Katja Lasch and I am the director of the German Center for Research Innovation as well as the director of the German Academic Exchange Service or better known in India as DART. The German Center for Research and Innovation New Delhi connects the German and Indian research ecosystem. It's a platform for thematic exchange and networking. It provides information and advice on the research landscape. We will do so today. Funding opportunities, international research cooperation, and current developments in science policies. As you see on the panel today, for instance, we will discuss open access. It's a science diplomacy initiative of the German Federal Foreign Office, and it's managed by the DAD. We are supported by 18 German institutions um, who are in the field of research active. These are universities, these are non-university research institutions such as the Max Planck Society and the Fraunhofer Society, funding bodies, for instance, the German Research Council, DFG, and research-based companies. With this event, we bring you a platform which allows you for you to connect with researchers and research institutions, be it in India or in Germany. So you are interested in funding your individual research day, be it you want to, would like to fund your research project or look for a partner, this is a good opportunity to reach out, to make new contacts and to uh, figure out uh, a lot of information on Indo-German research cooperation. So talk to the 24 institutions that we have with us at the virtual fair. Uh, there you can have one-to-one -one chats with them and the virtual exhibition is open all day long, also when the panels are running, and we're also going to have a break, a dedicated break for the virtual fair. Furthermore, we prepared four interactive panel discussions where you can ask your questions to the panelists and the experts. We will discuss gender equality in research, looking beyond numbers and parity. We will have a discussion on how to create public trust in science and enforce science literacy. We look at the open access discussion in Germany and India and we also give insights into the funding mechanisms for international cooperation. The sessions will start at half past one Indian time and nine o'clock German time at the auditorium. And our speakers, and I would like to highlight that, will be available for further discussions after the panel in the networking lounge. If you are not able to join all the discussions, as we have a, everybody has a busy schedule these days, uh, they are available also a bit later and they are recorded. More than 1,700 people registered for the event and you can connect and interact with them in the networking lounge. In this area, which is on the platform, you are able to see the profiles uh, of the other attendees and you can reach out to them. And also in your digital briefcase, which is on the bottom of your screen, you can save the chats and contacts and also download links and materials which you might collect at the fair. For any questions and feedback, please visit our information desk in the main hall who also helps you to guide you through the platform. I also want to highlight, so maybe you have other important meetings today, of course, that the platform will be open for one more month. So you can check also later the uh, recordings of the sessions and you can also check later the profile of the research institutions. Fostering and promoting international research cooperation is the focus and the aim of the Indo-German Research Day. Uh, before we start our thematic sessions and focus discussions, let us have an outlook on international research cooperation. I welcome Professor Sandeep Wermer who will discuss with me a bit the outlook on future international research cooperation. He has been since 2019 the Secretary of the Science and Engineering Research Board, SERP. He holds a doctorate degree from the University of Illinois Medical Center in Chicago, so he spent a couple of years in the US, I just learned, uh, followed by two postdoctoral stints, one in the US and one in Germany, and that brings him here today uh, on our panel. So he has been uh, working at the Max Planck Institute for experimental um, uh, medicine in Göttingen, Germany. He holds a professorship at the uh, IIT Campo in the field of chemistry, and his work has been recognized amongst others by the Goyle Prize and the uh, GCB Bose Fellowship, and he is an elected fellow of the Indian National Science Academy. So Sandeep, we agreed <laughs> to call us on our uh, names. Sandeep, welcome. I'm glad to host you here for our short discussion and short hours outlook. So indeed, we have a long, we have a long-standing career, not just in science, also in science administration, mm -hmm. and we are witnessing at the moment 
global challenges which require global solutions on the other uh, on the one hand on the other hand we have seen that borders have been closed during the pandemic india is striving for self-reliance and also the elected german government is highlighting to enforce the research innovation system in germany for uh, and it's calling for technology for sovereignty so what is your take on it do we still need international science cooperation and has the pandemic probably created a new momentum for this First of all, uh, let me give greetings to all of us who are participating today in the Indo-German Science Day. Uh, thank you very much, Katya, for these words of introduction. Very happy, very delighted to be part of this uh, inaugural session. It is a very important topic as far as uh, most of us are concerned who are engaged in doing science, uh, scientific research, that we have to go beyond our capabilities and one surest way of going beyond our capabilities and develop certain capacities in niche areas of science and technology is to collaborate. And what better in terms of collaboration than getting engaged with top level scientists who come from different orientation, different background, different countries where science and technology is being pursued. And in, the, and in this uh, uh, backdrop, I think India-Germany cooperation stands out given our common motives, given our common thread of doing research at the highest level with the most integrity and honestly and developing traits, developing thoughts and procedures, processes which can use science and technology to offer solutions. And as you correctly pointed out, uh, the pandemic has showed us that there is a need to go beyond borders. If you look at vaccines, if you look at drugs that are being repurposed, including most of what is going to come as follow up of what we have seen, the kind of uh, devastation that we have seen, it is increasingly becoming clear that one country may not be able to solve these complex problems that are facing the humanity today. And as you talk about uh, science for diplomacy and diplomacy for science, I just take a moment to point out our Honorable Prime Minister's desire to have vaccine metri where the vaccinations or, or vaccines were provided to partner countries, to our friends, uh, so that all of us can tackle this couch together, this pandemic together. So with, these, I mean, with this uh, uh, brief comment, I think there is an absolute need for international cooperation and we need to find the right ways and mechanisms to strengthen it further. Okay, thanks for that insight and uh, I think we can all agree on, on this, yeah. of course, and I'm um, taking the German perspective. Uh, we have seen investments, we have seen cooperation. We currently had uh, the um, international, the head of the international department of the Robert Koch Institute with us talking about it. So I think there is definitely a need and to take it further. But before taking cooperation further, one has to look at its own house, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So in the currently published UNESCO science reports, uh, there was a call for resetting the STI policies in the countries and to better equip governments and research institutions with instruments and capabilities to direct innovation efforts towards the goals of sustainability, inclusivity and resilience. So we've seen that the new German government is intending to increase the investment in science and technology from 3% of the GDP to 3.5%. Uh, percent of the GDP. So what is the outlook on the Indian government on this? Uh, is uh, there also a strong um, yeah, force or a strong wish to foster international cooperation? And what is the outlook for the Indian science system over the next couple of years? So uh, I think it is not lost to all of us that there is a definite need to strengthen science and technology capabilities. And I'm very happy to share with you that with the latest announcements in the budget, the funding that is available to scientists for research and development and innovation is consistently increasing. And the emphasis is not only in funding science, but also bringing in equity, empowerment and diversity amongst researchers that eventually is going to become a critical issue as we equip ourselves, as we equip the Indian population, at least to begin with, that there is a need to develop scientific temper and the scientific temper can only be developed when you put the money in right places to develop capacities and you strengthen the instrument that bring out the best in all of us who are trying to pursue science and technology research. So money is 
is available to us and as and when we desire the the uh, the government is totally supportive having seen the fruits of labor that we have put in last so many years and that has culminated into a, in our own vaccine right so you never know how these strengthening of these fundamental grassroots processes bring you dividend decades from now on so be it a very uh, 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 low hanging fruit or it could be something very unique say quantum mission or cyber physical system so time is now money is being invested and i am very happy to share that we will have a definite footprint for the world to see and to see that how we are going to perform in terms of niche, in, in niche areas of research that's that's good good to hear uh, you mentioned putting money in the right pockets which would be these pockets in the future in india what's ongoing maybe for our german audience uh, in in the system maybe you could highlight one of the on one of the projects of the indian government so uh, if if you were to divide this fund uh, these these uh, funding possibilities there are uh, there, there there is a need to strengthen grassroots system so you're talking about state universities uh, central universities institutions laboratories within india which are the key stakeholders of uh, of research in india the second level when you come is you're talking about major missions major national missions such as cyber physical system where close to 1.5 billion dollar uh, in purchase power parity has been invested where you're looking at you know everything that falls under cyber physical system it could be cyber security it could be internet of things it could be drones robotics and you know their application in sectoral hubs now when when i say sectoral applications what it means is that how these uh, uh, instruments could be used in agriculture for food security for water for defense energy so these very stronger verticals that are the edifice of sustainability of sustaining the human kind that is going to be paramount then we come to other national missions such as quantum mission where the there is going to be a major push by india to come up with quantum technologies quantum computer quantum encryption whatever you want to club under these major uh, quantum mission uh, uh, quantum national mission that is where money is being put the other money is being put on advanced battery technologies where we are soliciting performance link uh, uh, incentives so people who would come and develop uh, batteries for electromobility for very many other things such as uh, uh, storage of energy and we have uh, the the semiconductor initiative that has recently been launched by government where silicon making chips and the large scale print printing of of circuits etc that could be accomplished at india level so these are major major interventions where a lot of money is being invested in addition to strengthening our grassroots science technology uh, research and development ecosystem Thanks for that insight, and I think we have a nice match here. With, if one looks at the six missions of Germany at the moment, so what you find is yeah, clean energy, where batteries play a role, of course, and uh, uh, sustainable mobility. We find uh, exactly what you mentioned: uh, technologies for sustainability, uh, also for sustainable agriculture, for instance. Um, Germany is looking into yeah, technology sovereignty and digitalization. Quantum is one of the high-level missions at the moment, but mm -hmm. AI also, of course, not to forget. Uh, we are looking also um, into yeah into the space and into the ocean uh, and uh, find new ways to, to use the resources sustainable. I think there's a good match, and I think these are the worldwide topics actually ongoing, and Absolutely. it's good to see that India is investing as well. Uh, you mentioned the grassroots level on on cooperation. Um, sometimes in Germany we have discussion ongoing: should we these topics set by policies, uh, so top down, or what is or should these topics develop bottom up? Um, there's an ongoing discussion, of course. So how does it work in India when these missions are, are set? Is there a cooperation? Um, is there a stakeholder pro process behind uh, bringing the top and up and bottom up together? Or how does that work in India? So I, I think uh, when you look at uh, grassroots stakeholders, I am looking at institutions, researchers who have their own research agenda to follow. we want to support researchers that they have uh, i mean where there is no intervention top down we let the ingenuity of individual researcher flourish by supporting them bottom up but having supported lots of projects or you know individuals institutions bottom up 
there is also a need to align the outcomes of this research. So outcome and output of research that is being conducted by public money that has to be aligned to the benefit of the nation for the growth of the country. And that is where, you know, you would like to put together certain top down calls, certain top down policy decisions where India would like to strengthen its research capabilities. That is one. And second would be where we would like to get ahead of many other countries. Like if it is quantum mission, if we are going in certain direction in a given uh, uh, research, broader research theme, right? Then top down calls, top down interventions or top down mandate really creates large pool of money dedicated just for that cause. And that allows not only grassroots researchers, but then you bring in the startups, then you bring in the, the, the smaller enterprises, including the larger enterprises, and try to develop with the hope that you would strengthen the research system, research ecosystem in a way that the outcome output based, you know, sort of uh, 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 parameters are taken all the way to their logical conclusion. So that was an ideal situation we would like to see. And for that reason alone, we are trying to strengthen the research ecosystem at all levels. So as you pointed out, uh, we would like to strengthen both the bottom up as well as top down. Yeah, I think uh, so processes which we have in Germany too, we have the high tech strategy in place, for instance, which sets the framework and then this framework is filled up yeah. with, with bottom bottom up projects. If we look at international cooperation, let's take the quantum quantum mission you just mentioned for India and which was published two years or uh, launched two years ago. Is there foreseen dedicated funding and dedicated money also for international outreach and uh, cooperation? So I, I can give you example from our cyber physical systems mission where already money has gone and these uh, technology innovation hubs have been created in close to 25 different niche technology areas that belong to cyber physical systems. And uh, there the international cooperation caveat has purposefully fully put because we do not want to exclude any knowledge that would be available elsewhere. So the partnership in these niche areas is extremely important and that and, and and you have to be sure about it that all these technology innovation hubs have gotten money to create right opportunities for inter international partners to come in and and say choose cybersecurity as one of the theme where they would like to contribute or robotics or there are certain areas where we are very good at for example anything that is being driven by algorithmic you know uh, uh, procedure procedures all those things are going to be made available for our international partners and i think uh, the german colleagues german agencies should actively seek and you know sort of uh, uh, find the right partners build that bridges so that we also get benefited from your uh, your knowledge and of course we can have it both ways right right so the, the two way mobility of ideas of research concepts and cooperation would benefit both nations i think research cooperation and internationalization has uh, that core in 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 its purpose when you look at from a distance okay good wonderful uh, we had this meeting uh, or this week a meeting organized by the Indian Embassy in Germany on the occasion of 75 years of independence of India, where we had an exchange on the future on science and technology cooperation, a staggering more than 25 institutions were at this virtual round table representing uh, yeah, India and Germany and presented their support mechanism and cooperation projects. So from your perspective, um, we have a lot of money in the system, the opportunities are manifold. Is there a need for more funding for a dedicated Indo-German cooperation? I think uh, Indo-German cooperation is poised at a stage that it definitely needs uh, more funding. It requires more building of bridges, especially when we talk about younger colleagues. Because as you pointed out, my connection to Germany dates back uh, to 95, 96, right? But what I would like to see ideally is that the younger colleagues who are coming up in our new institutions especially when you look at our female researchers we have to have specific programs to engender long-term cooperation with those youngsters who would carry us forward for next two to three decades so funding is necessary it is always good to have more funding but let us put it in a focused way so that the areas that require 
cooperation, the areas that require two way traffic of ideas, the flow of concepts is strengthened rather than, you know, uh, continuing uh, to fund those core core concepts that have already been addressed in last, say, two to three decades of past cooperation. Yeah, I think from, from our perspective would be necessarily also to map a bit the system, what is there, not to duplicate and yes. to identify focus yeah. areas. Like to mention here that uh, we as German Center for Research and Innovation will launch a new portal in April where we showcase all the funding opportunities to lead also the young uh, researchers through the system. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky because there's so much out there and so many different institutions and one has to navigate through. So connecting is the portal that's upcoming. Um, and then I think that would also help uh, when we have all the information on board to see where we have gaps and where are yeah. specific yeah, um, career stages we need to support and what, uh, what would be the specific fields uh, which we would need to support uh, in the Indo-German cooperation. You're also on the board of the Indo-German Center for Science and Technology, which is a co-funded mechanism of the Indian and German government. So from your experience being on the board, seeing what has been funded, how one can use the existing funding schemes better? Do you see enough applications um, um, incoming? Is there a diversity? Do we need to enlarge our outreach probably? So from your experience with the, with the IGCST, uh, what could you relate to that? So uh, having, uh, I mean, I mean, contributing as a governing board member in IGSTC, it's a wonderful, wonderful platform. I mean, to have a dedicated bilateral organization which has commitment from both countries is the ideal situation which would you which you would like to leverage and come up with new programs where the uh, not only outreach increases, but you bring in more people to your fold, to the ambit, because these these investigators, the people who would do science in India and Germany, they would have to, they, they have to know what options are available with IGSTC. And of course, we should always be on the lookout for newer programs where you can bring in people who have not been aware of the possibilities that exist in Germany. And the slight nudge, making the bridges, bringing them together would be essential. And I think IGSTC should play that role of nucleating people, nucleating their ideas, so that then they can, you know, capture some of the, the imagination of uh, people from both sides and, you know, seek competitive funding from IGSTC. So IGSTC should be strengthened. It's a wonderful body to, to leverage, uh, you know, advantages in our favor. Yeah, it's a, it's, yeah. I think it's a wonderful body, but I think it's important to point out that we have different funding schemes for different, not different uh, purposes in a, in a way. So maybe a short cooperation will start uh, with a yeah, with a first visit using the Gian scheme, which exactly. plays or the DAD funding schemes for research stay, one can then go ahead maybe have a workshop funded by IGCST for yeah. developing a research project, and then maybe uh, one heads into a, uh, um, a DFG DST co-funded scheme. So I think it's important that there are different mechanisms and that the people are aware of these mechanisms, and then to do it in a in a bit of of staggered staggered way. Yeah. As we have a panel discussion on gender, and you just told me in our pre-talk that the gender is uh, important to you and you would like to increase. So where we are standing with that and why there is such a need for onboarding uh, and to encourage especially uh, um, uh, women in, in science. So uh, that's a very good question. And also, also I think that it is uh, uh, not hidden to all of us that when you look at the landscape of people who are doing research, we have to take everybody along. So any disparity, any you know sort of unevenness in terms of uh, gender or equity that you have to bring in science would not let your processes flow properly. And that was not that did not escape our attention to say the least. Then when when I started in SCRB, we we launched a new program called as providing opportunities for women in exploratory research. So it's an, the, the acronym is POWER, right? So it is, Sir POWER actually caters to our female researchers exclusively, gives them a level playground to come up with their ideas and their ideas are funded through Sir POWER. So having said this, there is a need definitely to bring out female researchers at international level and give them the right opportunity, a level playing field, if you will, which allows them to interact with, it could be female or male researchers in Germany, but at least our investigators should have that, that, that 
program empowering empowering program which allows them so we are committed to the cause and you would see in in recent in in next uh, few weeks or so we would be further strengthening the cause of female researchers bringing up bringing equity and parity uh, when you talk about international mobility when you talk about uh, interacting with uh, international collaborators uh, we'll be unveiling that part we are still working on it we'll be sharing it with you and all other investigators and our other partner agencies who are on uh, this panel today really looking forward to that and good to sure. see that you take this important uh, topic up which uh, is of course also in germany a discussion ongoing and we will take up that topic today a bit later or in, immediately in the next okay. in the next panel let me ask you one last question with, with regard to open access you now if we talk about borders internationalization uh, open access to uh, to science um, we in germany we have a strong open access initiative ongoing uh, there's a, yeah, a concentrated effort of the research institutions um, to work for open access to make it available. What is ongoing in, in India with, with that regard? Um, I've heard something about an open access initiative. Uh, is that also a topic which is discussed in the Indian uh, scientific community? So uh, I, I can only tell you that it, open access, open science is part of our science, technology and innovation policy, policy 2020 which is being you know uh, almost at the at the last stages of its creation so we feel very strongly about how uh, the the openness of science the access to science and how not only scientists i'll go a step further how the society can have the right kind of scientific temper by making or by lowering down the barriers that have existed between science and society so open science for me would be uh, more a pervasive you know phrase that would encompass not only scientists not only the way you would look at publications not only the way you would look at you know repositories data but also how you would bring this open science all the way to our communities and our society and pandemic has showed people have now realized that science plays a very critical role in their you know existence so i think uh, open science i would not let uh, I mean, let's say too much about it at the moment because it is part of our STIP 2020, which is going to be unveiled and released at the highest level of uh, engagement within India. So uh, I, I'm sure shortly you will get to know more about it. Okay, then we're looking forward for the uh, launch of the uh, STIP 2022. Mm -hmm. Long awaited, I have to say. Uh, the, the draft is a long run in the making. Um, but good to see that these topics are also playing a role in India and good to see that these topics which we are um, picking up today actually are um, uh, uh, ongoing topics. So we, we talked about the funding, we talked about the outlook on the research landscape, about the gender in science, science literacy we mentioned, and looked into open access and uh, also um, and, yeah, into funding mechanisms and gender. Uh, you, we will all take these up, these questions uh, today. We mm -hmm. have a four hours event ahead of us for for our events ahead of us uh, for yeah, taking these questions from an Indian and German perspective, but also would like to mention from an international perspective, the International Science Council is with us, Eurexis. So we will not just stop it at the Indo-German perspective and taking also international. Sandeep, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, Katia, for this uh, joyful and engaging conversation. I learned a lot about the Indian take on international science cooperation, and I hope we could bring to our audience a bit of an insight what is ongoing in Germany and India. I wish the audience a um, very nice day, fruitful day ahead, good networking, good conversations, good meetings at the digital fair. And yeah, for, um, I personally look forward to see you, the audience, be it on the platform uh, on the digital fairs or be it at one on the other DVH events. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it remains to wish you all a nice and fruitful day.